The ending of Resident Evil 8 wraps the events of the game up into a neat little box, bow and all. Our endeavors pay off as we finally reunite with Rose after defeating Miranda, only for the game to then literally blow everything up. And while all this happened fast, it's not the thing that had me doing a double take. No, what had me doing that, while also pondering the future of the series, was the post credit scene. There's a lot we don't know about this scene, and because of that, we don't have much choice but to take it at face value. That includes its implications for the future of the Resident Evil series. Let's take a moment to analyze the scene. Rose has grown up. We don't know exactly how old she is, but she's at least a teenager. She's being escorted by an unnamed man, and based on the conversations between him and Rose, we can assume he works for Chris. Rose claims to have terrifying powers, which she threatens the unnamed man with when he upsets her. There is, of course, more going on here, like the figure walking in the background at the very end, but we're going to focus on the three things above, and the effects they carry. The biggest of these three is the first. Rose has grown up. As she's a baby at the beginning of Resident Evil 8, this immediately signals that a time skip has taken place. Okay, so they could pull that weird trope where someone grows up super fast due to their powers, but let's stick with the time skip. It's honestly hard to imagine. The world of Resident Evil suddenly thrusts over a decade into the future. When you think of just how much happens in the same time frame within this universe, from Wesker's betrayal of stars at the mansion in the first entry, all the way to his downfall in Resident Evil 5, it puts a perspective on just how much may have taken place. The world Rose lives in may be drastically different, but one thing that would certainly be different are the characters we follow throughout the series. Chris Redfield, his sister Claire, Jill Valentine, Leon Kennedy. All these characters are suddenly that much older, and for some of them, that's a big jump. If the time skip is at least 12 years, that puts Chris into his 60s. I think we can all agree we would hate to see this set of characters completely retire, so hopefully they're still kicking Parasite and Zombie Mold behind well into their later years. Let's take a moment to focus on the unnamed man in this scene. We mentioned it's almost certain he works for Chris. By extension, the unseen operative he talks to after Rose threatens him also works for Chris. The same operative that has Rose constantly in his sniper rifle's crosshair. What exactly have the shot means in this situation doesn't matter as much as the fact that Chris has seen it necessary to pin a sniper onto Rose whenever she's out. We do not know how Chris has changed over the years, or how his organization has grown, but he's cautious of Rose. Which leads us to our third point. Rose's powers. Being the daughter of Ethan, Rose probably already has some powers, but then she got kidnapped, cut into four pieces, and encased in amber that was then passed around the four lords of the village, all before finally being burst anew from the mold. We may not know every implication of this, but we can assume from her threats that it left her with some crazy powers. We've also seen plenty of what the mole can do throughout the game. So if she even has half that power, Rose is a force to be reckoned with. However, that's the problem. Imagine that Resident Evil 9 features Rose as the protagonist. It's great we get to continue the Winter's family story, but we're now playing a survival horror game where a character has the power to crush any phone or path. No guns needed. It'd be like playing Krauser in Resident Evil 4's Mercenaries. Enemies being mowed down with the swing of an arm, except it's the actual game and not a bonus mode. While not all Resident Evil entries have been strictly survival horror, with the fifth and sixth installments featuring an action-heavy narrative, is that something we want the series to fully embrace again? And in this future world, what becomes of all the characters we've cherished in the games up to this point? They're older now, so do they still take part in the operations? Or are they stuck in political roles, calling the shots from behind the scenes? It's divisive. On one hand, Ethan's story has shown that a new character can flourish in the series. And on the other hand, Ethan never had a long time skip, and supernatural destructive powers looming over him from the beginning. These things that come with Rose potentially change the dynamic of the series we've grown comfortable with over the years. But maybe a new coat of paint is what the series needs, one that blends with the characters, stories, and style of gameplay that makes the series great instead of covering it up. For now, we ponder. The epilogue of Resident Evil 8 shows us that change is coming. All we can do is wait to see what this glimpse of the future turns into. So yeah, let me know what you think of all this in the comments below, and I'll catch you all again real soon. Cheers!